So there's this customer that comes into my store probably like once or twice a week. He works with a program called Instacart. He basically buys people's groceries for them so they don't have to leave the house and he delivers them to them. So we're having a conversation at my register one day and he made a gross sexual comment. It gave me very much pedophile vibes. And I was like, um, uh, relax. And he was like, oh, no, no, like, I'm just joking. I joke with all the girls here like that. I don't know if it's because I watch too much TV, but that shit didn't sound right. My spidey senses tingling off the charts. I was like, this dude is a fucking weirdo. If you're a rewards member at my store, your name comes up on my computer screen when you type in your phone number. So being that the sex offender database is public information, um, I went out on a limb here and what naturally occurred to me in my big old badonga was to look up his name. And what happened when I looked up his name? Sex offender. I was engaged to the love of my life, but my sister met up with me and begged me to break it off. She said I had to leave him because they were in love. And he was just too afraid to break up with me because he didn't want to hurt me or my family. When I confronted my fiancé about my stepsister's accusations, he straight up denied him. He said she's been trying to come on to him for some time and he never mentioned it because he didn't want to ruin our relationship. He begged me not to believe her and so we continue how we were. My stepsister grew resentful and made nasty comments about how I was forcing a man who didn't even love me to marry me because I had low self-esteem. A month later, I get a text from my sister. It's a video of her and my fiancé sleeping together in my bed and multiple screenshots of him telling her he loved her. How he wished she was the girl he was marrying and how he hated that I wouldn't let them be together. I was devastated and angry but decided to move in silence. I went home, grabbed all my stuff, removed all my money from my joint account, and moved in with my dad. After that, I sent all the screenshots to my family and his. He tried getting back with me multiple times, but I ended up blocking him when I found out he proposed to my sister with the same ring he gave me. I left it behind. Now, they're getting married. I literally want to cry. So if you didn't know, I have a sister, and her name's Ashley. And we both have boyfriends. And every night we both fall asleep on the phone with our boyfriends. So one day we're all hanging out and we're like just talking. And my sister's boyfriend looks at me and he's like, you need to stop going into your sister's room in the middle of the night. And I look at him and I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't have a reason to go into her room. Like I, I don't go into her room, especially in the middle of the night. Then my boyfriend hops in the conversation and he's like, no, 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 no. He's like, no, I hear Ashley go into Kayla's room every night and stare at her. So me and my sister both look at each other and we're like, we don't go into each other's rooms, do we? And we agreed that we do not. And they said this has been going on for months. So for months, somebody or something has been going into me and my sister's room for about 15 minutes every night and watching us sleep. So I literally thought people were joking when they were talking about stepsisters getting with their stepbrothers. Turns out it's not a joke and I just found out that my boyfriend cheated on me with his stepsister. When I was a freshman in high school, I got into a lot of trouble and ended up getting my phone taken away for six months and had no social media for a year. My parents literally didn't allow me to have Snapchat until the summer before my senior year. But I was allowed to have an Instagram, so the moment that I was allowed to have my socials back, I made an update on my story. And within a few hours, a boy that I had been talking to before I got my phone taken away swiped up. We started messaging, talking again, hitting it off all over again. Again. And even though he lived about two and a half hours away, within a week we started dating. I actually had a few other friends that were dating guys in the same town, so I was like, hmm, if they can, so can I. After dating him for a few months, I decided to invite him over to my dad so that they could meet. And both my dad and him hit it right off the bat. Chef's kiss. Also, we can call this guy Darren. I noticed that he was super weird with his phone and he would put it in his pocket anytime I was near. I asked him what that was about and he was like, well, I just don't want to be on my phone. It seems rude. It seemed like a logical response, so I brushed it off. But the next day, a girl messaged me saying that she was dating Darren. Part two. So I noticed my best friend sent my fiance a picture and he was in the bathroom so I went ahead and opened the picture. You guys, it was a selfie of her wrapped in a towel fresh out of the shower. So of course I show it to him and he's like, oh my god, why would she send that? He totally played it off like he had no idea why she would send that to him. So I call my best friend and I say, hey, did you just send my fiance this picture? She hesitated for a second and then she's like, oh my god, please don't tell me I sent him the picture by mistake. And I was like, yeah, you sent him a picture of you in a towel. And she said, I'm so mortified, I'm so sorry, I meant to send it to somebody else and then she's like you believe me right and part of me didn't want to but part of me had to I couldn't believe that my best friend would do that so i said yeah of course i believe you and she completely changed the subject and told me about the guy that she was currently seeing who she actually meant to send the picture to a few weeks passed by and my fiance says he has to go on a work trip weirdly enough she said she was going to go on a trip with a guy that she had just met i asked her to meet the guy before they actually went on a trip and she said no because he's really shy can you believe they went on this trip together come back for part three
Part three. So my best friend and my fiance go on a trip by themselves behind my back. The whole time they were on their trips, I thought he was on a work trip and I thought she was with some dude. Because of the time difference, my fiance kept saying that he couldn't FaceTime. So we would just talk on the phone. The conversations were really short and he was acting really strange. He told me he was on a work trip to London and because the whole thing felt so strange, I decided to call his mom. So I call her and I'm like, hey, where did he travel to again? And she replied, Aruba. I didn't say anything to her and I just got off the phone. I knew he was lying. And I knew my best friend was in Aruba. I connected the dots and realized they were both on a vacation together. The day that he was supposed to fly in, I showed up to the airport knowing that he was coming from Aruba. And I see them walking out to arrivals hand in hand. They saw me right away and my best friend literally ran away. That's when he told me that he no longer wanted to be with me and that he wanted to be with my best friend. I had already paid for the wedding. He was such a coward. Two months later, I found out she cheated on him and he came back to me. I said no. I had a crush on my brother's best friend. We're gonna call him Pedro. One day, my brother and Pedro had a plan to go to the beach together and then Pedro invited me. And I was like, let me check if I have something to do. Um, I don't, I'm going, I'm gonna go, Pedro, don't worry. But the night before, I was like, I need to look scandalous, like so scandalous. So I remember I wore this two-piece bathing suit. Okay, so long story short, the day came and we went to the beach. So we get to the water and immediately I go in. I wanted to show him, like, I'm a bra girl. Oh, this is the best part. <laughs> So I'm coming out of the water and I'm trying to look like a baddie. Like I'm trying to walk out all cute, like the hair is wet and everything. And I noticed Pedro was looking at my legs. So I was like, maybe he's trying to shoot his shot. So I went to go tell him something. And I was like, why do you keep looking at me? And he was like, look at your legs. I look at my legs. There's a whole ass piece of poop from the beach water. why you should be really careful how you treat people and also why you should stick up for people. When I was in eighth grade, I was really good friends with this kid named Damon. Me, him, and this other friend of mine, we were all at the same table in English class. We would joke around, talk about the same TV shows and movies. We were the loudest group by far. But near the end of the school year, Damon ended up moving. And it really sucked, but we said goodbye to Damon, who I should tell you was this small, short, funny, wisecracking kid. It didn't matter what you threw at him, he was super witty. So we said goodbye to him, we all went to ninth grade. It was either the end of ninth grade or the middle of sophomore year that I saw Damon again. He had transferred back to our school, saw him at a pep rally, and I was sitting by myself because I despised pep rally. He was like, Josedak, do you remember me? I was like, oh my gosh, David? He was so much taller, face looked different, his voice was deeper. This was obviously a different kid but really happy to see me. So we started talking, catching up. Then I started noticing that he was getting hit in the back of the head with tiny paper balls. He wasn't even flinching. I looked behind me to see three boys throwing paper balls at him. What? Dude, do you see what they're doing? Yeah, I'm used to it. What? This was not the same witty boy that I knew. Oh my God, I'm running out of time. Watch part two to see my- Story time. So yesterday my friends and I all went to the fair and there were six of us in total. And none of us wanted to have to worry about driving there and parking, so we just Ubered instead. So we left the fair around 11.15 and we walked to a nearby shopping center where their Uber picked us up about 10 minutes late. We ended up leaving at 11.30. We get in the Uber, the man says hello, and we head home the normal way. Everything's fine. And my parents don't like when I Uber, so they were tracking me on Life360 from the moment I got in the car. After about 10 minutes in, I get a text from my mom and it said, where are you? I look up from my phone and I realize I have no idea where we are and Ubers know their directions, they know how to take you home. We were 20 minutes out of the way. So I'm terrified, my mom's texting me non-stop, literally about to call the police. I'm gonna run out of time but posting part two today.